Now, what am I going to learn if I stand at the bottom? I mean, I know the answer to this because you know, I'm such a fan anyway. <laughs> I've stood at the bottom of my garden many, many times. <laughs> I have hundreds of space apps. I've got a telescope. <laughs> so, asking in general for everybody else, what will you <laughs> yes. learn at the bottom of your garden? Well, one, one of the things that the, the book's about, I mean, it goes all the way to these ridiculous numbers you hear. The universe is 13.8 billion years old. How do we know? Uh, the universe, there might be multiple universes, perhaps an infinite number. How do we know those things? But you start from the beginning. What could you do? from your garden. So one of the things we do in the book is look at the planets and we use Neptune as an example. So over the course of about a month, or a bit less actually, you will see, if you know where the planets are, this and you look at the... the starry background, you can see that they move across yeah. the starry background. And that alone allows you to calculate the distance to the planets. So you can measure the size of the solar system if you want, yourself. By just and do you need to have a fancy telescope to see Neptune, or no, do you? No, we, we just um, used a camera in the book. So uh, just a normal camera pointing up and just taking pictures on clear nights of, of one of the planets. And, and, and over the course of about a month or so, you'll see it move. And you can line them up. And, and by doing them. something that simple, didn't you work out that NASA had slightly overestimated the distance between these things? Uh, no, I don't think NASA would have overestimated because, <laughs> because they send, the, because they send the spacecraft to them. So if they overestimated the distance, they'd mess okay. it up and it'd be a terrible mess. Okay, fine, mess. I must have read so, it no, What did no, you read there? Yeah, you can measure it quite that. accurately. There. But the thing is, it's not that much of a leap to start um, asking questions about the age of the universe from okay. that. Um, so you can measure, you can, we can see one galaxy just about from Britain without a telescope, which is called Andromeda. It's so two and a half million light years away. So that means that the light, you can imagine, entering your eye, began its journey before there were any humans on the Earth, long before. That's mad, isn't it? That's it's, it's the closest. That's you you say that it's important to have this sort of cosmic connection. Why is it important? Well, I think one of the, the most valuable things about astronomy is it, 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 it allows us to talk about our, our place. I mean, are, are we uh, one planet amongst, uh, we now know, perhaps 20 billion Earth-like planets in our galaxy alone and 350 billion galaxies in the observable universe. And that sounds like we're insignificant. But I also think that the perspective that astronomy gives us tells us that perhaps the number of worlds that have um, beings like us that can have conversations about astronomy, perhaps that's very small. So what that means that we're very valuable. Carl Sagan famously said that pictures like that, it's a pixel of light. Mm. And he, he said, well, you know, the, the fact that through our history, generals and, and great warriors have fought over the temporary ownership of a piece of that pixel. And still continue to fight so now. We still do. We, we try and divide the Earth up into lots of different regions and fight amongst ourselves. One photograph like that changes your perspective yeah. on our place. The, the SpaceX founder, Elon Musk, plans to get humans to Mars in six years. I know, I, I don't know about that, although if anyone can do it, he can. I mean, you've seen those videos of his rockets going to the space station and then landing again. Yeah. It's pretty, so, but I think, I think it's basically a one-way trip, I think. I was going to say, how long would it take the, to get there? I think it's, no, it's a year or something. It's quite a long time. But I don't think there are real plans to come back. I think it's more like the going to America 300 years ago or, or, or Australia. I think yeah, but at really least there was something to, to eat when you got to America. I know, I'm wondering about Mars, you know, would I go there? I would always you say, go? Well, would no, you? I don't think, well, I would, not on a one-way trip, would you? No, uh, not, not in a moment. million years. Maybe in, maybe in 30 or 40 years' time when I'm, you know, just on the way, <laughs> on the, on the decline. Are, uh, I mean, we could, <laughs> we, could talk, we could talk to you, well, I could talk to you uh, all day. Um, you can, well, can come and see you live. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're doing some shows before, Chris. They've got sold out, though, but so we put some more in next May, including to my sort of horror, or Wembley Arena. Did so you go to get there when you were in the band? Uh, not Wembley Arena, no, <laughs> so it'll be Arena Cosmology <laughs> with a big screen. That's not been done before. I don't, not to my knowledge, no, but I, I will talk about these things. How do we know about the origin of the universe, the end of it? What, what fate awaits us in the past? But how brilliant that the demand for, for science and, and all of this is so great that you're filling arenas. I mean, that's just brilliant. I know, I, 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 yeah, I thought those days were over when I left my band. No, but, that's um, brilliant. Yeah. It's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> For more of the same, just click here and don't forget you can subscribe for even more of these amazing videos exclusive to our channel. Having excuses to get the good stuff in them. I mean, I can literally put fruit down as a kind of dessert and they go, nah, not having it. And then you go, do you want a, do you want a milkshake? And they go, yeah. And then you just put it in liquidizer with some milk. Yeah. And some ice, and then they drink it all. So you know, it's nuts. Yeah. Um, you know, my, somehow my wife um, convinced my kids that frozen peas were sweets. <laughs> I've never heard of that one before, but it worked.